Hey y'all, this is Spencer from FS Elite. Back in late January, I posted a review that I had done of the Honeycomb Trolley Pedals, and there's no way around it, I messed up. I had critiqued the pedals quite negatively uh, from a perspective of ergonomics, and that was a result of me using the pedals incorrectly in terms of feet placement. In the weeks of myself testing the pedals prior to releasing the review, it had never crossed myself or my team's mind that I had been using the pedals incorrectly, and so we went forward with the review. After the review had went live and we received numerous comments about my feet placement, I spent the past couple weeks really testing out the pedals from that uh, correct perspective, and my opinion on the ergonomics has changed quite drastically. And so we want to redo the review. Uh, I wanna make a sincere apology to all of you and to Honeycomb for misleading you on the ergonomics of these up upcoming pedals and correct uh, the, my opinion. Um, we're going to be unlisting the initial video that I had done, but for transparency's sake, we will be leaving it um, still up. I'm gonna post a link down below in the, comment, in the um, description. But what follows is going to be a redone uh, review. Um, we're gonna be using a lot of the same footage um, and some of the same commentary. The majority of the changes will be found in the ergonomics section. Thank you everyone for listening and enjoy the rest of the review. Hi everyone. This is Spencer from FS Elite, and today we're going to be looking at the new Honeycomb Charlie rudder pedals. After we've all been patiently waiting for years, Honeycomb has finally completed their flight simulation setup, adding the Charlie rudder pedals to their product line. These pedals follow the immensely successful releases of the Alpha Flight Yoke and the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Honeycomb has sent us a pre-release build of the pedals. Let's find out if they are worth picking up. Bottom line, these pedals are great if they meet your use case, but they won't be for everyone. In the sim, they work great with a tremendous amount of travel and responsiveness. The pedals are incredibly robust, they are comfortable for me, but I'm not sure they would be comfortable for everyone. And I don't think they are a winner from a practicality perspective. The pedals do command a $350 price tag, which I do think is fair for what you are getting. Let's talk about why. Before jumping into the in-sim use or the ergonomics, let's take a look at what we have. First off, let's take a look at the build quality. Honeycomb has gone with a black matte metal look and a design that, I think, is aesthetically pleasing. I love the Honeycomb design at the front with the iconic red glowing LEDs. This is a big item. I view it as almost a statement piece. Something that when someone sees your setup, they will realize that you are really into flight sim. On that note, these pedals are absolutely massive. The whole apparatus weighs a whopping 26 pounds, which makes it the heaviest flight sim peripheral I've ever seen. I did find it funny that Honeycomb listed this as a feature on the side of the box. Who are they kidding? No one wants to be lugging around a 26 pound weight when they are getting ready to fly. With that being said, these pedals are not going anywhere regardless of how much force you put in and without any requirement to lean the pedals up against a wall. Besides being heavy, it's also physically large. It takes up a roughly 18 inch by 18 inches of floor area and is eight inches tall. For reference, here it is next to my old CH Pro pedals. From a practicality standpoint, this is a real drawback. When you aren't using these pedals, where do you store them? If you keep them under your desk, that's a huge area where you can't put your feet. If you were hoping to store the pedals somewhere else, good luck, as these are tall too. Something to consider if you are using your flight sim area as a multi-purpose area. Dimensionally, we have one of the more annoying design choices on this build, the location of the tension knob in the USB output. Most people probably are going to want to put their pedals up against the wall which isn't possible with this design. You are going to be stuck with the tension knob touching the wall. This hasn't been too big of a deal for me though, as I've noticed that the rubber grip surface works great and there is no shifting to the back, left or right when using the pedals. This should also work on a carpet surface as well as there are interchangeable carpet grips, although I was not able to verify this as I don't have carpet in my apartment. The tension knob adjusts the tension of the belt. 
The further to the right you turn the knob, the more resistance you get from the pedals. If you turn the tension knob to the left, you take the resistance out, or you can keep going and take the knob out altogether. I'm very confused as to why a captive screw was not used here, as there is no practical reason that this knob should be easily releasable by the user. You also have an option to change the angle of the pedals. It's not a super quick process. You have to take a screw out and use quite a bit of force to remove the pedal. Once it's off, there is a very generous range of angles that you have to choose from, with sets of grooves for different angles. I played around with some options, but ultimately determined that I preferred the original angle option out of the box. I'm not sure if Honeycomb has further plans for add-ons to this set, but these pedals are interchangeable, and they could very easily sell pedal sets that represent alternative aircraft, similar to how they have sold the Airbus throttle inputs for their Bravo. To be clear, this is just me thinking out loud, not sure if Honeycomb has any intentions on pursuing this. Ergonomically, these pedals are going to be very user dependent. Starting out, you will have your heels resting on the base. The balls of your feet should be resting on top of the pedal axle. From this position, your feet are able to rest and you can slide them easily forward and back. And you can hold a rudder angle very easily with just the friction of your heels. It feels incredibly natural to slide my feet forward and backward, putting in rudder. Further, braking is easy as well. You just have to rotate your feet forward over the pedal axle. When you are in a phase of flight where pedal use is unnecessary, you can easily rest your feet below the pedals on the base. The pedals are placed high enough that I don't feel any concern about accidentally bumping them and disconnecting my autopilot, even when wearing slippers. The pedals take up a large amount of floor area, which may lead to the pedals saying where you usually rest your feet. As a result of this, your ankles may have to rotate to an unnaturally high angle. If you have a deep desk, this won't be a problem for you. The width of the pedals is fantastic. Honeycomb uses this center box to house the belt for tension, leading to the user's feet being several inches apart. This aspect is great. It's a very natural position when applying rudder inputs. The height of the pedals is well suited for me. I find that I am able to very easily transition from applying rudder force to applying brake feet in force. However, people with smaller feet may struggle with that maneuver. I don't think these pedals would work well for kids for that reason. When utilizing the pedals, it requires a lot of force. With most products that include a tension knob, this isn't a problem as you can typically lower the tension to an acceptable level. Unfortunately, I don't think that's the case here. Even when using these pedals at the minimum setting, it requires so much force to move the pedals that I actually ended up having my desk chair on wheels sliding back in response. Doesn't make flying easy. This won't be an issue if you have a stationary chair. Ideally, I would have liked to see this design have a wider range of tension forces it supports. Having high tension is fine, as many people are going to be utilizing pedals in a stationary chair setup. But I think many people like me will have a chair that rolls and find this annoying. I did find there to be significant variation in enjoyment of these pedals with my choice of footwear. The pedals work perfectly with shoes and the friction and surface area that shoes provide. Less so with socks and bare feet. When wearing socks, I still find there to be some slippage and at times found it challenging to apply the brake force I intended. When barefoot, I did find that the pedals worked exactly as I wanted, but I didn't find them to be comfortable, as my toes got stuck in the braking holes. These issues may, might not bother everyone, but I found them relevant. With all of this in mind, how do they work in the sim? First off, setting these up is super quick. You just plug them in and Microsoft Flight Simulator recognizes the pedals immediately. If you want, you can go in and adjust some settings. Personally, I wanted to add a little bit of dead zone to the pedal travel, as I found that the very center of the pedal travel was very light, and I was putting in rudder and brake inputs without intending to. Like other axis-based inputs, you can configure these settings however you like. The pedals have a long range of travel, and have a high amount of precision along the whole range. The belt system inside the device provides smooth travel of the pedals, the response of the pedals to various force inputs feels very realistic. 
I've done experimenting flying the pedals around using everything from a Cessna to using both the PMDG 737 and the Phoenix A320. In all circumstances, I feel like I'm getting an authentic experience. On the ground taxiing, I have very fine control over the rudder and braking. When flying and dealing with a crosswind approach, I'm able to in be incredibly precise with my inputs, yielding a much smoother flying experience. The toe braking on these pedals is phenomenal. There is a long range of braking inputs that you can put into either pedal, enabling fine control of the braking system. Other pedal systems I have used had toe brake axes, but I've never noticed them to have this much range. Really enhanced my taxiing experience. I especially loved it when taxiing to a gate for parking. I felt like I had very precise control on my taxiing speed. So where does that leave us? We have a set of rudder pedals that work absolutely perfectly in the sim, but have ergonomic and practicality characteristics that make them not for everyone. I think if you are looking to build a home cockpit with a stationary setup, as in you don't have to worry about where you are going to store the pedals, I think these pedals are a great option. For the more casual home simmer who uses their desk area for more than just flight simming, I think these would be a great option if the practicality and ergonomic concerns I have raised do not impact you. Honeycomb is asking for $350 for these pedals, and for the quality of the product you are getting, I think that is absolutely worth it if it fits your setup. That'll do it for this review. If you have any thoughts or questions, put them in the comments below. For FSC Elite, this has been Spencer, signing off.